Hey everyone, you are now tuned in to George Wood Live and the Sober Truth Podcast, where we go through stories of recovery, faith, and life and try to bring awareness to addiction, mental health, suicide, and trauma, and the role that faith plays in how we recover. Um, we feel like bringing this awareness can make a difference in the lives of everyone. So today I'm really excited because I have actually been a, um, a Facebook fan of this organization um, and this amazing couple that is really trying to bring awareness to trauma and they've done multiple things and are doing multiple things and I'm, I'm going to let them just kind of jump in and tell a little bit about their story. But Dana and Tim, it's just great to have you here today. Thank you for Thank you very us. much. Appreciate it. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny because one thing I didn't know that I found out last night is you're from Watertown, New York. <laughs> I am, as a matter of fact. I am from just outside of Syracuse. No way. Yeah. And as soon as I didn't, I didn't want to say anything until I heard you talk. Yeah. Because I, upstate New Yorkers talk a certain way. Yeah. And so as soon as you walked in and you started talking, I was like, oh, yeah, he's an upstate New Yorker. That's so. funny. No, no one usually knows where that is. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was from a little town called Westmoreland, so outside oh, of Syracuse. I know exactly where that is. Yeah. I always say Syracuse. Yeah, <laughs> so do I. I did too, but I, you know, in case anyway, people from back home here, they're like, he's not from Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we have uh, we had one stoplight in 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 Westmoreland, so I think they still do actually. Um, I've been here since '93, so I. Seldom we think of how long you've been here. Oh gosh, like sixteen years. Gosh, or something see like everybody, that. everybody watching or listening. Gosh, that's an upstate New York <laughs> thing right there, man. Uh, like totally. I used to, I used to use uh, <laughs> wicked all the time too. Wicked, wicked awesome. <laughs> wicked awesome. Oh my, gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny, man. Anyways, it's just great to have you here and. Uh, Dana, you're from, I found out as you came in the office that you're right from around the office in yeah, Tampa. Yeah, I was born and raised Tampa, was born in St. Joe's Hospital, and haven't really left since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get out more, right? I know. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, but anyways, it's just really great to, to have you guys here. Why don't we just jump, jump right in and tell me, you know, tell the world, everybody watching, listening, um, what it is that you do and how we got there. Okay, so um, my journey began um, just through a story about me. Um, I was raised by two amazing people, but unfortunately, um, during that time when pain pills were not the addiction properties and things like that weren't really talked about, my parents became addicted to prescription drugs, and um, it became pretty bad and my brother and sister as well. So I was the only one, I don't know why, I just saw it and I was like, I don't want that life. Wow. Um, I was also very close to my uh, grandmother who was a praying, amazing woman. And um, my parents were Christians as well, but they just dealt with this addiction. So I like to put that out there because a lot of times when people hear drug addicts, they think the worst and no, they were very smart, amazing people, but they got hooked on prescription drugs and it was very unstable, unstable for a long time. And, um, when, unfortunately when I was 18 years old, they both passed away just three weeks apart. So I lost my mom July of 2004 and then my dad three weeks later and, was it um, from the pain pills? Yes. So technically it was Tylenol poisoning because there's Tylenol in all these pills. And then they, unfortunately their livers just shot. And, um, and then in 2011, my little brother died as well from it. So he was 24 wow. years old. He overdosed accidentally. And um, so it's taken most of my family. I mean, literally it's a statistic you have a better chance of dying in my family than living. So the fact that I've never been a drug addict, the fact that I've never went that route is a God thing. Like I, I don't understand it half the time, but I, I praise God that I never did. I did not realize that was part of your story. Oh yeah. Um, or I would have like really been attuned to that. That's although, you know, I, you definitely would have been on here if I'd known just that alone, <laughs> yeah. because that is such a primary thing that we do. Um, my brother and sister died from drug overdoses seven months apart. Wow. And, and he was an attorney here in Tampa, graduated, you know, hot top of his class. So, uh, no, you can be very smart and die from drug overdoses. Now, unlike your story, unfortunately, I did become a drug addict, but that's a story for another time. And uh, and also in my family, I had a, uh, you know, you're more likely to die than, than to live. So I totally yeah, can relate. And, and honestly, I mean, back 
in the 80s and 90s, they were not telling people about the addictions that can come from certain things like prescription drugs. And it's sad because it takes the lives of very great people. They actually did the opposite and put campaigns out there saying you couldn't yes. get ad- addicted. Yes. Yeah. And so um, they came forward now and said, oh, by the way, yeah, it's addicting. And so yeah. it's frustrating. But, um, you know, addicts are good people. It's just they have a problem and they um, unfortunately don't live the life abundantly that God sure. died for them to live. But with that, I ended up getting into, I got married very young because I was just broken. And so I got married at 18 years old. And um, it was a boy I met at youth camp at church. So I was like, oh, he must be a good guy, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, <laughs> I didn't realize how abusive it was until it got physical, which is crazy because now I look back and I'm like, I should have seen this a long time ago. But with uh, abuse, the funny thing is, is that sometimes that it's hard to even say what it is. Like you're right. so brainwashed that you don't even know what it is. So it was psychologically, emotionally, every way. And then eventually it became physically abusive. But in that we had three children. So I thought I need to be a godlier wife. I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. It's always going to be me, the problem. Mm-hmm. So I believe that, um, spiritual abuse as well was a big problem because we were in the church doing things like camp counselors, VBS leaders, like doing it all. Playing the role. Yes. And yeah. I, because I full heartedly wanted that. Like I was, like I, God gave me a promise of a godly husband and I believed it was him. And then, you know, as things went on, I realized more and more my worth. And then God started to show me like it one day he literally w- spoke to me. You think that you're not an addict like your family, but your codependency and mm-hmm. your toxic relationship that's your addiction. And if you don't get out now, you're going to die young, just like your parents did wow. in their, in their codependency wow. because they were codependents. Yeah. And so it is an addiction and the devil is so sneaky that he came in from the back door and said, I can't get her with drugs, but I'm going to get her this way. Yep. And I just looked at, you know, my circumstance and I said, Oh my gosh, like I, I was prideful in the way that I thought I wasn't an addict, but I was, it was just different. So um, that began the journey of me getting out, and um, it was almost 15 years we were married. But at 33 years old, I took me and my children, and um, we were homeless for f- almost four months. We bounced wow. around hotels, friends' couches, anywhere we could go. But um, in that, God was like, if you jump, I'll catch you. And, you know, I was able to jump and he did catch me. I mean, there were days I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for the hotel for two more days. And somehow it would work. And God just revealed to me so much in that time. I was able to grieve the deaths of my parents, my brother, because I just, when my brother died, I got angry Yeah. because he was like, I almost was like his mother in ways. And so I just was like, I can't do this again. (laughs) So, uh, God was able to just allow me to find myself, to find myself find my word to see what, who's Dana? Like I did people would ask me and I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know what I like. I knew I was this person deep down that was gentle and loving and kind, but I had to be tough because of my circumstances. And I was able to finally start to be me. And I went back to school. That was a dream of mine to go to the University of Florida. They accepted me into their online bachelor program. I graduate in a couple of weeks with oh, my wow. bachelor's degree. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yes. Thank that you. is amazing. And I was able to um, do an internship with an organization called Break the Silence Against Domestic Violence. And um, they offered me a job. So now that's where I work. Wow. And yeah, so now I'm able to advocate and help survivors like I was because, again, many of them don't even know they're being abused or they're out of the abuse and they don't know how to live. And that's the thing that we try to talk about um, with our our passion is trauma recovery. It's that after you're out of the crisis, the day-to-day, what is, it's the journey that I went through once I left. Like, who are you? What What's your worth? What are the things that, you know, that, that, that make you happy? What are the things that upset you? It's a ugly, we call it a beautiful, ugly journey yeah. because some days it's, it's rough and then some days it's beautiful. And, um, to, to be able to help survivors now through my job, it's, God is so good because it is a full circle. I mean, just it three, is. just three years ago, just a little over three years ago, I was homeless 
with three children. So um, packing lunches from a uh, mini fridge that did not freeze. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, sorry, you're getting the Uncrustables that are already thawed out, kids. But, you know, in that, God, like, just poured into me and my children and even they are now doing things to help advocate and it's incredible and and then he brought god brought me tim and you know now we have a passion together and so it's and he has you know he's stepped up as the father of my children of course and so it's a ministry all on its own that you know like with god like he loves us as our his children and the way tim loves my children well, our children, the yeah, way he loves our children, you know, it's, it's cool because they don't share DNA, but they share that bond. So, you know, it, it's just a testament that you can be in the, the deepest of sorrows. You can be in the, the trenches and God can lift you out of it and then he can use you and he'll use that testimony. It doesn't have to be the end. It's just the beginning. So um, we started a website called the Trauma Survivor's Guide to Life Abundantly because that scripture says, you know, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And so when you're a survivor of domestic violence, a lot of times you survive even when you're out. So you're in survivor mode. We want to help people get to the part where you live that life abundantly, that life that Jesus died on the cross for. Right. Because, you know, for me, God told me, like, the life you're living, I didn't die on the cross for you to live in abuse. I didn't die on the cross for you to live like this because people use scripture to say submit and all these things for people to stay in abuse. But I can go on and on about that. (laughs) (laughs) But that's not the life that Jesus died on the cross for us to live. And so we want to help people get to that point because crisis, getting out of crisis, of course, it's important. We, we want to help people get out of crisis too, but we also want to, you know, show them like you can make it and be better. I I'm the best version of myself that I've ever been even before. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. It's like, I, you know, I almost thank God for the things I've walked through because it's gotten me here. But you know, a lot of people don't think that you can, you know, Oh, I can't go back to school. I can't do these things. Why not? Right. I, I had a, I had nothing like literally nothing. <laughs> if I could do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, man. I I just got to say for everybody watching or listening, that right there is just one of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard. Thank you. I mean, honestly, I'm sitting here tearing up right now because <laughs> no, it, it's just beautiful because it is um, it is this cycle of life that so many people don't understand, don't don't know what happens to to people um it's just so much judgment to the mother who's sleeping in a hotel with her kids or judgment to the mother who can't make it work with her husband or there's just judgment 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 because people don't understand what people other people have been through what led them to where they're at and you know just the power of you know god in our lives when you don't give up exactly yeah it's just beautiful dana thank you for sharing that yeah, i just no um feel honored to to be sitting across from you well, thank you for that yeah and and, and you know what, how you say you know the, uh, god you know he jesus died on the cross to give you this life abundantly it's like we say that we're trying to you know help you know the book we have coming out the uncovery is we're trying to help people uncover the life that jesus died on the cross to give you because so often people just try to recover the life they had before addiction or before the trauma. What if you could have even more than that? Exactly. Yeah. You know, so life abundantly. Yeah. So it's like.